Scotland at its finest and we are here to enjoy every moment of it. There's the castle, the history, the characters and of course the shooting. German rifle and shotgun manufacturer Blaser has invited us along with Will Hetherington, editor of Shooting Gazette, and Rebecca Green, editor of Sporting Shooter, to experience some of the best the West Coast, if not the country, has to offer. This is a real gem where we'd like to come and just have a good time because everybody here just works toward their goal that we are having a good time, that everyone's comfortable and happy with what they're doing. And it's the whole approach that makes the, this place special and um, we, we, it almost feels a little bit like family when we come here. Earlier this year Blaser launched the F-16 shotgun. This will be our chance to see how it fares in the field with some fast action woodcock shooting. Plus our trip coincides with the hind season so we're going to assist Neil Rowantree of West Highland Hunting with the cull programme. We're looking at age, whether they're old and infirm, we're looking at whether they're poor, whether they're carrying any injuries, and then what we're trying to do is leave the strongest, fittest hinds in the herd to produce the biggest, strongest calves that we can. And where we are heading off to today requires a little more planning than normal. What we're off to today is we're heading over onto the Ardneish Peninsula, so here we're looking up Lochilert. On the right hand side we have the Roshvin and Inverilert deer forests and this little peninsula land is largely uninhabited. There's a holiday house on it in a mountain bothy and a reasonable population of red deer. So we manage this population on behalf of the owners and we take on average 10 stags and 10 hinds a year off it. So that's what we're off to do today. But as you can see with Stevie putting the stuff on the boat, everything goes over by boat, everything comes back by boat. I've done it once before. And um, yes, it's always good fun. Last, well, it's going to be better today because last time it was quite choppy, and we were worried about this little dinghy sort of tilting us in. But um, today is quite calm. Looking, really looking forward to it. Conditions are more than sensational. And uh, yes, let's let's just hope that we can have some fun over there. On the skyline above us, deer are watching. There are some lower on the face, and a shot presents itself. And using Neil's like a geovid system, Robert makes a very good shot. The animals here will be half the size of those on ground Neil manages less than an hour away. It's poorer grazing and uh, it's harsher environment and they've basically adapted to, to a size that suits the environment they're in. If you go to the Outer Hebrides to uh, Harris and Lewis, You'll find a sort of a big stag there's nine or ten stone in weight. So a good stag here would be. We have had big fellas here, but an average is about 14 stone, 13 and a half stone, something like that. Neil and Stevie have a good idea where they will be, and a good idea which ones they're hoping to take. Over the brow there are three reds. Neil asks Robert to take the middle hind first. That was a good shot, Robert. Let's keep the rifle handy and wait we are for more. Lovely rifle, isn't it? To the extent if I go anywhere to shoot anything, I take the R8 with me. And I mean, I've shot everything with that from eland to bears. In the theatre that we're using these rifles in, we're managing deer, so you're, you're, you're shooting one animal, but you're often watching a group because you're planning on shooting one or two individuals. And it's important that you see that first animal go down, and at the same time you're almost keeping an eye on your next target. And if you get a little muzzle flip, so you're losing target animals out of the picture, it, it, it takes you more time to reacquire the target and see what's going on. The thing I like about the 300 is the recoil that's there is a nice steady recoil. I think, no, I think it's a good combination. I think the rifle's well balanced, the moderate makes a difference, and the calibre suits it. It's, it's the ergonomics as well. Yeah. It's because it's, it, there's a reason that this swoops up. So they try to get the comb as high as possible with still allowing the ball to operate. And um, it's just steady, it, you've got, your trigger hand is always relaxed. So that's the most triggering, it's the most important thing if you yank the rifle because your hand is in an odd place. With this one it's just literally the hand sort of falls naturally into a place that it already wants to be. 
thinking it's time to think about getting back to the boat. Neil's done what was needed. It's been very successful. We, we came to shoot a few hinds, try and get the cull almost finished here. We're another day here now and we'll be complete. So it's been hugely successful. Thanks to everybody involved. Well done, Robert. And we have some cracking venison to take home. And it's bang on time-wise. We're trying all our best venison of the Christmas market. Another couple of weeks, we should be done here. Do you get bored of the scenery? Never. This is one of the most beautiful places we go. But I mean, with the weather like this makes it all the more pleasant. The days here, you've got your collar up and your hat down and you don't pay a great deal of attention to the scenery, but in a day like this, it's, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth. I first stalked here when I was 18 years old, but it's funny how you, you travel about different parts of the country and the world doing things, and you end up coming back to a place that you started off in. So I'm very fond of Arden. I think you are too. You'll not forget it. As the sun drops, so does the temperature, but the water remains calm. It's been a real education seeing just how Neil and Stevie managed the deer and the extraction off this beautiful place. It's probably a very different story when conditions aren't quite so still and dry. If you'd like to find out more about West Highland hunting, visit westhighland-hunting.co.uk and if you'd like to find out more about the Blaser range of rifles and shotguns, go to blazersporting.com.